file separately. Hey there, Tyler and Jillian. How you guys doing? We're doing good. Hi, Nick. How are you? Good. Hey. Hey. There's uh, Darian hey, Sage. Hey, Natalie. How's it going? Nice to see you guys. Hi, Nick. And welcome, everybody, to uh, day, what is it, three of Maker Camp. It's Weird Science Wednesday. We'll be talking with Natalie Villalobos from Google. Uh, we'll be talking about terrariums and some uh, desktop biospheres. So, Natalie, why don't you start us out and uh, tell us what are we doing today? Sure. So today we're going to be making some terrariums. Um, specifically, we're going to work on succulent-based terrariums because succulent-based terrariums um, are more hardy, and you can forget about them for a little while and they'll still forgive you. Um, other plants that are more, mm, say, humid temperature and require more water are a bit more finicky and fragile. And so I tried to steer us away from those because those can be a bit harder to maintain. Um, as an example for what a succulent is, um, I have this incredible table of stuff I'm really excited to share with you guys. Okay. So um, this is a succulent. So succulent being like a cactus. Um, they have these big kind of leafy bits that, uh, there you go, Daria, Daria's got hers. Um, here's another. So you can just kind of see that they're holding on to water. So we're going to focus on working with those. I got a whole bunch of those. Um, and so that's what we're going to work on. And then we also have Biospheres, which is more the advanced project that was on Makezine. And these are kind of the creepy, heavy, uh, wet terrariums right. um, that's kind of all about encapsulating life in a jar. So it uh, looks like this is really an experiment that you would leave in your backyard for a while. My friend Brooklyn made this. And uh, she made it and forgot about it, and now it's just growing I don't know what. So that is another type of biosphere. But we're going to work on terrariums. It's kind of like a, a living collage in a jar, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. All right, great. So maybe can we start off, how did you get involved with making and doing these kind of projects? Yeah, sure. So um, I think it actually goes back to when I was super little, but I'll give you the, the short version. Um, so uh, in 2009, I actually started, uh, I built my first rocket ship. I like to say I'm a rocket scientist. Um, I helped work on a four-story hand-rolled aluminum rocket ship that was featured at Burning Man. I worked on it with 60 of my closest friends in West Oakland. And uh, we had all sorts of neat science experiments in it, uh, different uh, alien species that we captured, ray guns. Uh, we had a sleeping quarter, you know, everything that would be in your normal rocket ship. Um, so we made that in uh, 2009. The group has made all sorts of really fantastic things. We're actually doing an art installation at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Oh, that's Stella. Um, San Francisco <laughs> Museum of Modern Art in, uh, in September. And, you know, what I love about where I live in the Bay Area, specifically uh, the West Oakland community, is that there's just a lot of people doing radical art, but with materials that you wouldn't necessarily think to make art from. And, um, you know, everything from the Crucible, who's very well known for the Fire Arts Festival, for their fire operas. Um, so you're combining the art of twirling fire, playing with fire, using it as a theatrical device, and, and implementing it into a, a classical um, play is really cool. So the Crucible is an incredible staple of the West Oakland art community. But then also, maybe I'll be able to screen share some photos with you guys later. My friends recently took two uh, fighter jets that they had acquired and chopped up the fire, uh, the fighter jets into, I don't know, probably ten pieces each. And then they reassembled them and the fighter jets are coming together and their noses are just about to kiss and it's called jet kiss. <laughs> and um, that, that fighter jet kiss, uh, you'll be able to kind of see through it where there's slices missing. And I think it's supposed to be installed in like two or three years in Seattle and it's going to be painted hot pink or purple. They haven't really decided yet. Um, so it's stuff like that where I really like seeing things uh, pushing the boundaries um, of using reused, recycled, uh, another good word is upcycled materials. Um, a lot of the things that I have to show you here uh, are things that I found um, either on the ground or at an antique market um, or maybe just at like a thrift store. So wanting to you know, live in that ethos of the DIY community and uh, not make it expensive. 
a little bit about me. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks. So, should we jump into uh, to terrariums and kind of check out what you have over there? Yeah. So you have some pretty crazy stuff. I do, actually. I think the craziest thing that I have is, um, I don't know, Daria, if you have one of these. My friend Daria Musk is uh, Hi. right there. <laughs> Daria, you want to, actually, before I get into Daria and Sage, do you guys want to say something? Hello. I want to say that I visited your rocket ship, and it was before I even knew that you had built it or that you were a part of building it. It was so crazy. Um, it was one of my first times out um, west to get to go and play. I'm, I'm a musician. I've never built a terrarium, but I will do my best. I live in the woods, so we have dirt and stuff. We're and, very um, familiar with <laughs> We're familiar with the material. We'll do our best, <laughs> but no guarantees it's going to be fantastic. No, yes. But I was like, oh, there's this really cool spaceship. And I went to hang out at it, and I took really dorky pictures, like pretending I was lighting it and stuff. <laughs> and then it was taking off, and then I was looking at the plaque of Natalie Villalobos built this with a bunch of other cool people, so she is a rocket scientist. Yep, yes. <laughs> my, my degree is in, in social science, and social science is totally cool. I'm a big history nerd, um, but rocket science is, is pretty much way cooler. Um, the other neat thing about that whole show, when we, when we showed it to Burning Man, we actually spent, I think, like $50,000 on uh, pyrotechnics, and Whoa. so we held a perimeter kind of like a 200, 300 foot perimeter all the way around the rocket ship, and then we just kind of had mega fireballs blasting off at like 11 o'clock at night. That um, is so cool. Yeah, so the, you're, I, you're, wish that, I wish that I could show that to San Francisco as well. <laughs> so you're, you're a social rocket scientist because what, rocket. what you've done with, I know from personal experience, what you've done with the social community here on Google Plus is like just skyrocketed, you know, people's lives <laughs> and relationships and stuff. So there, we got it all side in. And then Daria, who's sitting next to you? I don't know him. This is it's my brother. <laughs> it's, it's Sage. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Dar's brother, and uh, I'm excited to be here because I like to make things. And I'm a kid, so that's fun. Yep. So you just graduated high school uh, yeah. a couple weeks ago. So Pretty rad. Congratulations to graduating. And Thank you very much. He's an awesome writer and uh, one of my best buds. And true, right? if I laugh uncontrollably, it's because he keeps tickling me With a behind spoon under where, the table. where you can't see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we haven't, we, there's definitely going to be brother-sister dynamics here. We haven't actually been in a hangout window together much. So. Hey, now, <laughs> One of the things that you might end up seeing on our side is I'm hanging out at my friend's house because her house is incredible. I'll, I'll show you guys some of the background. It looks like your house, Daria. There's just woods and lush greenery, and it's beautiful. Um, and I thought it would be an optimal place um, to do that. But if, if someone was in my frame... Um, which we might have some animals make a cameo. Um, I might poke them with one of these, which is a porcupine quill. Ow! Whoa! Whoa! That's Whoa. That's wow! So amazing. <laughs> There's a really cool store in San Francisco called Paxton Gate, and they actually do a lot of taxidermy. Um, I'm guessing they didn't like take those off a poor animal. They waited for it to pass away, and then they asked if they could use its quills. So wow. I actually got, um, you know, just to kind of show you guys what I have here. Uh, yeah, so I have a bunch of Sage only has the spoons. Three <laughs> <laughs> spoons. Um, so I have some quills. I also have, um, and I'll show you how we're going to implement all these things. This is an uh, orthoceris. Maybe that focuses, maybe it doesn't. We have some of those. This is a 500 million year old um, fossil from Morocco. And I thought that it would be a neat thing to have in a terrarium. I also have this mean looking tooth that I thought would be really cool to add into the soil. Um, I've actually noticed, and maybe this is just because um, my plants like it, but when I find bones, when, out, when I'm foraging in the forest or when I'm um, going up through rock washes and stuff in Utah, I'll, I'll take some of the bones and I'll put them in my potted plants when I get home, and the, the bones actually start growing into the soil. It's really cool. They create their own little root structures. Yeah. and um, and they grow some algae on them, and my plants love having bones near them. Um, I'm guessing because of all the nutrients they're leaching from the, the bones into the soil, they love it. Right. So if you guys find bones, don't be, I mean, wash your hands. But like, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. That's much more impressive. We were looking for fun stuff to put in our terrarium, and we found, like, a dinosaur. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Not real dinosaur bones, but close. I have a, I have a hippo. And nice. 
I everything think, from my childhood. I think this is a, I think this is like an otter. I don't know. Right. The otter, maybe, yeah, totally. Like an and then um, this is like my antelope. <clears throat> Woo! Getting the little make sign. Um, so I have, so I have some of those. Um, some other fun objects I have are. This. I have some really beautiful buttons. Oh, what a good idea! I love that. Buttons and then um, some marbles. My mom picked this one out. We went to the Alameda Antique Market recently, and my mom was like, "Oh, you got to have marbles in a terrarium." So, um, you know, these were like. I don't know, like five cents each or something like that, and the buttons were five cents each. So it was really cool to. Uh, this might be loud. <laughs> so Natalie, why would we want to have all this stuff in a terrarium to begin ah, with? Great question. So, um, so when you when you're building a terrarium, you know, like I said, it's kind of like a living collage. So okay. what you're wanting to do is you're going to put all these plants into an enclosed space. I actually like non-enclosed spaces, especially for succulents, because succulents like to feel the, the warm breeze of the air. Um, when they're enclosed, uh, they, that area is kind of more for wet plants, like I said, kind of like ferns and stuff. Um, so when you're building this little, this little world in a jar, little worlds have animals. Little worlds have toys. So, um, you know, I, I like thinking it um, you know, as it's a really fun decor. It's a way for you to kind of like set a scene and then have a little mini kind of nature scene in your house. So maybe you live in Manhattan, maybe you live, you know, in a really crowded city somewhere around the world and you don't have, you know, the forest like maybe Dari and I do, but you can actually keep a little forest in a jar um, or in anything you like. I'm actually going to be using this, which is, you know, I told you guys to use a mason jar and I know this is much bigger. I think this actually used to hold um, combs for you to sanitize them at a barber shop because um, it, it came with a lid and a bottom. Um, so I thought this would be easier to kind of show you guys what's going on. And so yeah, so that's why you might want to add some fun stuff. I even have, um, this is an old uh, spring from a clock. Oh, that's cool. Like that. I like that. And, um, and then these are just in your gorgeous. This is very steampunky right now. Uh, this is a, a clock hand, and so oh, nice. that you kind of just like put in the soil, or maybe if I aim it right, you can make a little flag with the with little. <laughs> That's oh, cool. The yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, you can kind of just get really super crazy inventive with it. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. What are some other things that I'd like to cover? Do you guys have any questions? Um, I can I can certainly always. Um, share more. I don't know if you have any questions from the comments or uh, Nikki might have some more. Yeah, so what kind of soils are we going to be using in these kind of terrariums? Does it matter, like, can you use sand or, like, mud or what do we use? I like mud. Um, mud? <laughs> I, I like messes in general, so um, okay. yeah, mud is always really fun. No, so for, um, for the terrarium, we're actually going to be using cactus soil. So, so cactus soil has um, some elements in it that create better drainage. It's not as dense as, um, as a potting soil. And so um, since we're using succulents, you want to use a cactus soil because succulents like to have a lot of drainage. And so we're going to uh, use cactus soil. And then one of the other layers, one of the things that's really fun about terrariums is you can see all the layers of what you've developed, kind of like the the bedrock all the way up to topsoil, like you uh, would normally have in the ground. Okay, sure. Uh, here's another layer that we're going to play with. This is charcoal, and so the charcoal is going to help you wick away not only the funky smells uh, that might be happening in your terrarium, but um, it's also going to help with the moisture elements. It looks like Sage has some. Is that your charcoal too? <laughs> yeah. Both of ours are sharing. He found charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> it's my charcoal. Um, and then one of the other things that uh, terrariums really like, going back to the drainage element, um, so this is some volcanic pumice, and so uh, having some rocks. And really, you don't need like volcanic pumice. You can uh, use volcanic rocks. <laughs> he just asked if you said hummus. <laughs> Did you? This is prehistoric hummus. <laughs> yes, right? Okay. Delicious. For people that don't know what hummus is, it's a garbanzo bean. <laughs> it's, a, it's edible. 
So we're not going to eat that. Um, so by every means, like, you know, here's like a cool river rock. If you guys live near a river or, you know, you can just walk outside and collect some rocks, that's perfectly fine. Like, you don't need to go get volcanic pumice. I do recommend cactus soil um, and charcoals definitely. That Maybe that's one of the only things you really need to purchase. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, when I was kind of showing you guys, I have a kind of feel like maybe I'm going to move the camera. This is an experiment, so bear with me. Oh, da -da. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. woo, there's my coconut water. <laughs> but there you go. So um, I have tons of great plants. So um, all these plants, you can see I have them in like little, I bought these at a little nursery in San Francisco called Flora Grub. And, um, and they were like $3 a piece. But one of the neat things about succulents, which makes it um, much easier, uh, you know, to, accessible and affordable, I see how this goes, um, is that you can actually go to an established plant, uh, an, an established um, succulent, maybe in someone's yard, but I didn't tell you that. I just totally forget I just said to pick it out of someone's yard. Um, <laughs> you can, maybe your mom has a plant, and what you can do is you can actually take a, a, a clipping, and so you cut a, a tip of it off. Maybe it looks a little bit like this, and so you just get to the very base of the main element of the, of the plant, and you cut it, and then let the end dry. And, you know, once it's dried, then you can actually stick it in the soil. It'll work perfectly. Hey, Natalie, I have a question for you from one of our viewers. Yes. Is it okay not to have charcoal? Um, you can have it without charcoal, but your plants will most likely rot. And I only say that in the in the in the succulent um, way uh, because if you have an enclosed system, ugh, like in here, mm -hmm. you don't need charcoal um, because you want it to be stinky, smelly, sweaty, and wet, right? If that's a biosphere, right? Not a terrarium. Right. Well, they it's well terrariums are also a type of biosphere. This is just kind of like a very wet, stinky version. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're both biospheres, um, but terrariums, when you think terrarium, this is what you think of. You don't necessarily think of like, you know, a science experiment that you leave out in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are having a super wet terrarium, mm -hmm. you know, then you can have like a bog, a kind of like um, a marshland, then you don't need the charcoal. But if you want it to maintain um, moisture really well, if you want to not retain, but maintain the moisture, um, and keep it nice and healthy for your succulents, then definitely use charcoal. So is that the difference between a terrarium and a biosphere? Hmm, perhaps. <laughs> Good question. Um, it's funny because they're kind of like similar terms, but in, in this example, yes, that is uh, from these nice fine plants and succulent terrariums to that guy, that is the difference. Okay. Cool. So no. what about, could we also use like rocks, do you think, Natalie, for like a like a way to have like the soil kind of be separate and allow uh, filtration? Yes. So, um, Maybe like bigger rocks, smaller rocks, pebbles? Yeah, so at the base, so let's start doing this. I will, I will start creating. Daria, are you guys ready? Yes. Absolutely. We have scissors. Right. We're going to cut open these bags of stuff we got. It's going to get wild over Wait, there. Do I get points because my shirt kind of looks like a terrarium? Yes, you get points. Uh, okay. Actually, <laughs> actually, what I'll do is, Daria, if you post photos of your terrarium on Google+, I will send you a nifty new Maker Camp button. Ooh. And, and Sage. I'm not going to leave you out, Sage. Yeah. What? We get a button. We get, get a button. button. You get a little oh. Maker Camp button. Hey, Natalie, real quick, I have one question for you from uh, one of our commenters, Christian. Uh, he wants to know what kind of animals can go in the terrarium. Oh, what kind of animals can go in the terrarium? That's a, that might be a longer question. <laughs> a longer answer. Um, so, you know, obviously, hippopotamuses are definitely allowed in terrarium. Um, same with antelopes and otters. Awesome. <laughs> So, so you can add any, any variety of those, but actually back in the day, um, at the beginning of, of kind of the understanding of terrariums, turn of the century, 19th, 20th century, mm -hmm. um, the terrariums were being built in something called, well, they weren't called these yet, but later they'd be called these, in Ward, W-A-R-D, and, um, 
And uh, I'm trying to remember his first name. He was called Lord for now. That's his last name. But he was trying to grow a moth in a terrarium. He was living, I think, in London at the time. And so he was trying to build an enclosed environment to grow a moth. And um, it actually worked. Moths didn't live for a very long time. So you can actually probably grow uh, quite a few different types of little animals um, in, in a terrarium because you're creating, um, you're creating the, what's the word for it? Um, the environment. You're creating the environment for these things to live. Um, even in a biosphere, I'm sure there's stuff living in that jar that my friend made. Um, and so with, with moths, uh, you know, maybe caterpillars, there might be some things that you can grow. And I would, whoa, Nick. I don't even whoa. know. Whoa. Whoa. There's, there's some stuff growing in this one for sure, I would say. Whoa. It's, yeah. This definitely is more like the, uh, the biosphere, like the aquatic water world, you could say. But you can definitely see some funk going on in there. So, yeah. so, so Nick, can I challenge you to open that and smell it? Because I'm just wondering what that Ooh. is. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't I'll mistake it for your room. room. <laughs> you, go first. you go first, and then I'll go second. Whoa. <laughs> no, that is no good. That is like the nastiest creak you've ever smelled. All right, I'm going to go next. I'm sorry, Daria, that you don't have one. Oh, you know, okay. it's okay. It's really okay. I didn't smell bad enough here anyways. Oh, mine is actually rather pleasant. Really? I'll smell my brother. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I don't, Nick, you must be doing something wrong. You're not playing it enough. Maybe. Music or something. I'm not, I'm not talking to my biosphere every night, so, you know. Yeah, way funkier microorganisms. This is true. I'll, I'll show you guys. Let's see if we can get some good light in here. Whoa. Nice. Right. So, Natalie, is that a terrarium or a biosphere or... Oh, man. So maybe someone can Google this, and we can figure out what the official definition of terrarium is and the totally. official definition of biosphere. Actually, and if you have the results from the Google, uh, go ahead in the bottom of this uh, post, type the, like, type the word answer in all caps, and we'll have someone um, who's reading the comments uh, ping one of us and let us know what you think. So again, if you're a camper watching this and you think you have the answer uh, in all caps under the comments, type in answer, and uh, we'll try to get back to you. Yes. So yeah, so mine's, mine's, rather, mine's rather nice. Alrighty. Uh, but we'll get back to building the succulent terrarium. Okay, so building a succulent terrarium. Go ahead. Terrarium. So in the bottom, you could do a... Um, I'll take the other one. Oh, Jillian. Jillian's quick. I don't know. I think we need to wait for the campers to weigh in on this one, Jillian. <laughs> Jillian, should we wait? Yeah, we should wait. Okay. I I won't All right. Jillian thinks she knows the answer to is the biosphere terrarium. He's Googling, too. I got it, too. So we're gonna uh, so we're gonna start with the, your your mason jar or something that's you know a fun uh, see through is awesome because then you can see it grow. See, look, we got these cool ones, aren't these fun? That's perfect. Yeah. That's, is that an old like fish bowl? Um, you know, it's like I think it was supposed to be for um like putting flour in one and like sugar in another, like in the so kitchen. Is your mom missing stuff from her kitchen right now? No, they're it's old. okay. They're, really old. they're old. We claim. <laughs> <laughs> As she goes in there, there's like flour all over the kitchen. Right. Hey, Natalie, does the color of the glass, <laughs> the container matter? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Does the color of the glass Ooh. that you grow your terrarium or biosphere in, does that matter? Like if it were green or, say, brown, would mm -hmm. that make a difference? Um, so my understanding, uh, I've only used clear, and I've actually only really seen clear. Um, oh. I can actually, in a little bit, I have this really cool book. Uh, that I picked up called the new terrarium. We can start exploring what um, finished products look like, but all of them are clear from what I've been able to tell. Okay. Um, amber glass in general is, um, uh, you know, like I've used it for different medicines, uh, different herbs that want to be kept away from light. So it tends to be more, amber glass to me is more protective than it is allowing light to come through. Does that so make sense? Yeah. So I would think that, you know, with these terrariums, they need four to six hours a day of diffused light. So I think that clear glass allows that photosynthesis process to happen, whereas amber glass, it's tougher for light to get through, and therefore you probably wouldn't get as good of a little terrarium going for yourself. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So start off with throwing some rocks in your glass, but, but gently. And so I'm just going to do... Um, I'm going to make a mess of what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll use a shovel. Wait, I can mute us. 
Whip loud. <laughs> no, I think, I think your sound is perfect. You're getting... <laughs> okay, go for it. It sounds like you guys are dumping marbles in it. Um, so, yeah, so you're probably going to want to do... Is, is that good? Um, yeah, so... Because you're going to do, um, like, what's the measurement? I took a good old note for this. Um, it was like three, let me see this. A mixture of three parts pumice or rocks to one part charcoal would be the best composition. So three to one. Um, so I guess I need more. Three to one. My floor is dirty. Oh, God. <laughs> so wait, how much do we need? Oh, well. <laughs> three parts pumice or rocks to one part okay. charcoal. So that'll be good. So then, um, so one part charcoal, and then we still have to put our animals, our moss, and all this other stuff. So maybe I'm actually going to duck out a little bit. I feel like we're on a cooking show. You actually can't eat any of it. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put like a nice, probably thinner layer. I'm going to get closer to you guys. Thinner layer of charcoal. Ooh, charcoal. Charcoal. Jackal. Okay, wait. Maybe you just don't forget your jackal. <laughs> don't forget your jackal. You got it. See, yeah. Sage and I are wondering why is the charcoal good for it again? Um, it wicks away moisture and stinkiness. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, here I'll. And, and we're hoping that it doesn't get stinky, unless you're Nick, where your plant smells. <laughs> well, and actually, Natalie, some wrote in and said that uh, one of the differences from the terrarium and the biosphere is that you should keep the lid on these guys, actually. You're kind of like creating a small closed ecosystem, and so when you open it, you're actually introducing new elements to it, and so you should not do that. So, sorry, guys. Got it. Don't then, open your biosphere. Well, um, and then, Jillian, what were you saying? You said that a, what was your answer? Um, th what I found out when I Googled it was just that a, a, a biosphere is a closed terrarium, but I think that that, that gives us a lot more insight, what Nick just told us, which mm -hmm. is really interesting. Yeah. And then so, um, going to Tyler's comment, actually, um, we got a result that says if you use green glass, the plants will actually die. Uh, the green light is reflected from the surface of the leaf. Uh, so that means the plant dies of sunlight starvation, actually. And so the plant absorbs the red spectrum the most. And so if we have green glass, that won't actually happen. That so if you use clear glass, you get the full spectrum. Is that you the get idea? The full spectrum, exactly. Very cool. That makes total sense. It does. Thank you so much to the, to the people that are watching for educating us because that's really, um, you know, one of the things that I love about terrariums and uh, it's actually a tenant of like a, a Zen practice is having a beginner's mind. You can't really, if you have just a couple basic elements, you can go wild with terrariums. Uh, it's all about being super imaginative, right? So if we just have our basics down, you know, it just start creating some, some layers and some structure and then you know, don't even think that when you're putting moss or lichen or glass or animals in here that you're doing it wrong, right? Just have a couple basic elements, and um, I'm sure it'll turn out right. And if not, experiment and try again. Uh, failure is a, absolutely a part of making, and sometimes failures are the best part of making. So, now, would you say this is a good project for someone who maybe doesn't have a big green thumb? Yeah. Um, well, and that's why, so with this terrarium, I'm actually uh, I'm focusing on one that you guys don't have to close up. Um, I wanted one that you guys could still, like, touch and check out from time to time. Um, succulents, uh, I, I can walk away from my succulents for weeks and they still love me. So, um, that's but with, pretty good. Yeah, but with kind of more closed plants, like these, um, these kind of more fern-type plants, these will not want to, these will die if you don't take care of them. So I got these just as an example, and I'll show you a closed environment terrarium. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do this. So then we, after you have your, your shackle, then you're going to add your, uh, your, your cactus mix. All right. Cactus mix? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. And actually another note from the, um, from the viewers was that charcoal is really good because it's so porous, um, has lots of surface area, and actually promotes the growth of uh, let's see, aerobic organisms, which actually um, consume oxygen, and those are good for the microstructures of the roots. So charcoal, lots of pores, uh, is good. Cool. Awesome. 
Thank you, Ruffles. All right. I wish you guys could see this. There's just some really cool layers for me. How are your layers, Daria? They're doing good. Here's stages so far. Yeah. Nice. It's getting there. It's getting there. We're putting in the cactus mix in the stages right now. Make some cactus. <laughs> when, uh, with terrariums, one of the things, too, when we're thinking about what tools might you use to, to make it a success, mm -hmm. your hands are pretty much like the best tool that you can use because getting to know the soil, getting to know the, the types of plants you're working with also helps you identify how to take care of them. And you should be touching the earth anyway. So yeah. I remember when I was little, my favorite thing um, – with my mom was we would make toys out of whatever was around and I always kind of grew up in the woods like this and so we would like paint rocks and stuff and then I had little Playmobil figures and we would make like a mud hut for it to live in instead of getting a dollhouse or something you know and, and it was great it was so much fun we'd learn about like people that lived in those kind of structures and then we'd build it and we'd thatch the roof with little they just pull up grass it was awesome. Yeah, I have another, another dirt today. <laughs> I have another comment from one of our readers which is actually super interesting so, right. so Christian tells us um, another, another answer of why is a biosphere different from a terrarium. A biosphere is a sealed, self-sustaining ecosystem, um, and it's a global sum of all ecosystems, whereas the terrarium is a subsection of an ecosystem, which is, I think, a really cool way of putting it. Yeah. Wow, cool. Yeah. 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 So, so how's it going, guys? How, how, are your, how are your terrariums coming along? We're doing Good. a great job. Yeah. They're being delicate. They're using their spoon. Ah, no, I was scooping it out. Method. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I mean. Um, the other cool thing is, so mine, my container is really flat, and I'm just making it kind of larger than life, so it's easier for you guys to see. But uh, Daria actually has a really cool example using her, her mother's flower bin. Um, <laughs> you can see she has kind of like a slope or a little mound. And that's cool. You're kind of creating a scene for yourself. So imagine if you were laying out the landscape of your dreams, how might you manifest that using the, the layers of the pumice and the, the charcoal and the, the cactus? So it doesn't have to be flat. You can maybe even cool. make a mountain in the middle if you can manage it. Um, yeah. So yeah. So don't think you need cool idea. You just need to be straight. You don't need to be straight. <laughs> um, so, so once you kind of have this all settled in, you can start... Um, planting your plants. Um, so I'm actually going to, uh, oh, one of the other things, I'm going to show you guys this. But one of the other great things once I'm done with my plants is that I have this really cool moss that uh, I've collected. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think you've got moss envy, getting old. Yes, I have moss envy. I was going to go get moss, but it was like thunder and lightning. We can probably get some now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There. You get struck by lightning and don't come back to finish your terrarium. I'm gonna be so sad. <laughs> so, um, so you're gonna do this, and uh, I'm gonna move over my fossils, and you're gonna start uh, when you undo your plants. You're going to squeeze the sides gently to just kind of loosen the root structure and the soil, and um, you can pull, and, and they're nice. Uh, I'm going to throw this on the floor. And so, um, so one of the things that you can do here is if there's a lot of excess soil around your plants, you can, um, you can actually shake it off a little bit. I'm not going to here because this has a really nice root structure that's framing it. I don't want to damage that. Uh, but if you do have some extra soil, you can shake it so that you kind of just get more to a nice ball of soil around the roots, and then it makes it easier to plant. Um, and, and, the, and, and the, the plant itself uh, will be totally okay with that. So you can just start making um, we have another a nice question. spot for it to go in. And again, think about how you're like, doing city day. Natalie, we have another question from one of our commenters. Uh, please, I believe, sorry if I marred that at all. Uh, can you make your terrarium with sand? Will that work? Yes. Yes, you can definitely use some sand. Actually, um, I'll show you guys pictures of some ones I did. Uh, Julius, if you look at my, uh, my Google Plus profile, I'm Natalie Villalobos, N-A-T-A-L-I-E-V-I-L-L-A-L-O-B-O-S, you will see that my recent posts are three terrariums that I made, and the orb that I have floating in front of one of my windows has a sand layer at the bottom, um, and it works really well. Do you need different plants if you're going to use sand, or the same plants will still work? 
So uh, sand is going to kind of be like your pumice bottom layer, like your drainage layer. So you're still going to have uh, like, a, like a sandy type layer, then you would still um, have to have your charcoal layer and then your, your, your cactus soil layer. Um, so it's just kind of an, another, it's like little, little baby pebbles, right? So it's still creating some drainage there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, thanks, man. Oh, so another layer. Um, so I'm, actually, this guy's really big. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Hey, should we like like get it kind of in, like dig a little bit of a hole to get it in, or what should we yeah, do? Definitely help dig it a hole because it can't do it itself. One of the okay. other tools I wish you guys had, and if you can find them, these are super cool. Okay. Tweezers. tweezers. Whoa, those are humongous tweezers. My yeah. So serious tweezers. Yeah. I think these are technically four steps when they're this big. Um, so these will help you dig holes in smaller areas um, okay. and, and put, put your plants in, put, the, put your little marbles in and stuff like that. So these really help. You can also use chopsticks if you're highly skilled. Um, uh, little barbecue rods that you would shish kebab skewers. You could use shish kebab skewers in the kitchen. Um, what else can you use? Do we want to dig all the way into like the charcoal layer? No. Just in the soil. Okay. Just in the soil. Awesome. I really don't remember what kind of succulent this is, but I thought it was so cool. Uh, you can if you can fit it. And I'm just going to kind of gently... Oh, man. My Would you ever want to break that up into smaller pieces if it wouldn't fit? Um, or would that kill it? Is we why I kill plants all the time? Don't <laughs> <laughs> an expert at killing plants. You just admit it. Um, uh, it very much. This root structure is uh, really combined. I think you should, if you were going to separate the plants, you should do that clipping, where you wait for this to grow out. You take a, a clipping, you let it dry, so that you keep the the home plant. Maybe I just made that up. Uh, intact. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna. There's a lot. <laughs> so we're getting a few more comments about the sand question, actually, too. It's saying that um, we wouldn't want to use sand for the main substrate, um, for the main soil, because there's no nutrients, so it wouldn't sustain the life. So like Natalie was saying, it's a really good kind of, um, almost like the rocks or the pumice, uh, using for like a filter bed. Um, but that since there's no nutrients like a soil has, it wouldn't really be good for growth. Right, right, exactly. I mean, if you guys think about it, when you go to the beach, there's not stuff really growing out of the beach. Except right? for ice plant, invasive ice plant. Yeah. Tyler and I know plant. that. Yeah. Yes. What is uh, an ice plant? It's super invasive. It's actually an invasive species from, I believe, uh, Tyler's South Africa. Yeah, I believe. It was introduced to keep, like, the roadsides maintained. Um, oh, so it's it really on sand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's taken all the water out of the soil and caused the dunes to erode away out on our beaches. It's not so cool. And where are you guys located, Tyler? Uh, uh, this would be out in like the Bodega Bay area in uh, Sonoma County, California. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if beaches are the same all over the world. I, maybe they are. I haven't been to that many international beaches. So. Neither have I. <laughs> maybe, maybe that could be the next maker camp, like on location at this cool international beach. Yeah, do we all get tickets to go to the yeah, beach? That sounds good, yeah. yes. I'm in a terrarium, so I can go to the beach. <laughs> That looks awesome. What is that? Is that a, is that a chicken in space? Yeah, of yeah. <laughs> Obvious, right? That's so cool. That is awesome. Where's his egg? He's got right. it. I'm just going to add a couple more plants. Oh, I only got dirt on my laptop. <laughs> yeah, we made a good mess, Natalie. You'd be <laughs> proud by look. Right. I think I'm going to have to show you guys the floor of, yeah, that's <laughs> excellent. I think <laughs> if, if we could give out badges at this camp, I would certainly have a mess award, like a mess badge. There should be a mess badge. Right? Whoever makes the best mess. Oh, my gosh. This guy is not wanting to come out. He's defiant. Just like me when I was a teenager. <laughs> that is not happening. I'm going to move on to another plant. Maybe I'll do this guy. Um, so, yeah. So, Daria, do you have any animals that are going to go in yours? Or any old broken toys or 
People um, I've got, it. I've got a dinosaur right now. Nice. Yep. Just and sort of chilling, and I was just looking around. I definitely have some more stuff. I'm excited to sort of make mine all girly, like find some cool. I know I've got some cool marbles or little bits of maybe um like old costume jewelry kind of stuff or Absolutely. something like that. Yeah. So and finally, we've we've got one member of our editorial staff weighing in. This is a another bit of info from Gareth Branwin, editorial director of Make. So he's telling us that the general term vivarium is used to refer to a small scale simulation of a habitat. So a terrarium is one of them, and then there's also an aquarium, an insectarium, which is an insect oh, habitat. Maybe we can make that next time. That would be amazing. And then it Earlier, uh, when we were hanging out, Nick was getting attacked by a bee in that maker shed. No way! <laughs> <laughs> we need a gif of that. <laughs> it was pretty freaky. I'm not going to lie. Huge. It was like mm. near the camera, and it was just like, boom. Oh, my God. It was, it was pretty awesome. So if we had an insectarium, I can, I can only imagine um, what it would be like to work with all those different types of uh, insects. Hey, Natalie, we've got a question from Christian. Uh, why do you need to add cactus mix to the terrarium? Ah, so we're choosing cactus mix um, because it is, uh, um, we're working with succulents, and mm -hmm. cactus mix has more of a, a drainage element to it. it. It actually already has some of this volcanic pumice already mixed in with it, so it allows for better drainage. Um, if I were, again, using, um, I'll use this other example. This is a fern medusa. Um, if I were using a fern, I would use a potting soil because oh, okay. it actually likes denser, wetter soil. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. So if I it can really depends that. on the kind of plant that you're putting in your terrarium. Totally. So if you actually look, you can see the difference. This soil is wet, and compared with this, is a bit drier. You can oh, see the difference. See the difference. Yeah. So, so this likes to have that denser, yeah. wet, and this likes to have the more separate, dry. So it really depends on your plants. We have another question from commenter Taya, who wants to know, how much sunlight do they need? Yes, so um, I want to see if I can find an example. There's a dog pass out of the couch. Um, <laughs> so they actually really like this kind of light. This is a really soft light. About four to six hours of a diffused light. You don't want to have a super bright sunlight, mm -hmm. uh, because then you're going to start getting, um, the edges might start getting burned. Um, it might just dry out a lot, and um, and so you're wanting to kind of give it like a nice soft glow, like a nice soft mm -hmm. That explains why they're so popular for indoor plants, right? Right, totally. And this is like a soft, it's almost kind of, almost like a cold looking light. It's got like a blue greenish to it. Mm -hmm. so you want to focus more on this color spectrum um, to make your plants optimally happy. Good question. Um, Thank so you. So here's some of my plants. I'm even uh, letting this one dangle out a little bit. Ooh, Ooh. stylish. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, out of the box. So what I'm going to do, uh, I can certainly add more, but I, um, I have some of this moss. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's actually listed on the Make Project um, on, the, on the parts list. Nick, maybe you can remind me the exact name of this kind of moss. But it actually um, is kind of like a clump, and it's, it's dry. And what you can do is you can actually um, rip it apart really well. And right now it kind of looks like a Pac-Man or, or, or a mustache. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. More you guys. So, Natalie, is that going to be sheet moss? Is that what that is? Oh, thank you. Awesome. He's gonna moss. He's going to go get moss. Is he gonna go? Okay. Are we gonna see Sage on the tree outside? Yeah. yeah. He's gonna look. He's going. I'll be, I'll be right there. <laughs> He's gonna go find some moss. This is awesome. Um, and what? One look in my kitchen drawers and the weird. You know, does everybody have that drawer that's like filled with random stuff? That okay. The stuff you can never find, but you never yeah, know. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's a random mess. bit of something that broke. I don't know what this was, but look how cool that is. <laughs> you need you that. Can't that's, see them. that's going in. I thought actually, you were going to say you found moss in the drawer. No, <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> That's actually cool. It, this would be a great way to make your parents happy. You know, just clean out the junk drawer and put it all in some soil. <laughs> exactly. It would be totally awesome. So what you can do with sheet moss is you can rip it, and you can actually, it's so dry, you can actually kind of start to shape it a little bit. So it's like I went from having a mustache to now a rectangle, right? Or I can, like, rip it apart now. 
I don't know. It's kind of like a cloud game. Like, what is it? It's a, it's a, it's a trapezoid. Um, so okay. we're going to, um, you can put this in, uh, you know, in and around your terrarium. You don't need to cover the entire, um, the entire bit. You can just kind of put it wherever you think you, you'd want an extra little greenery. Um, you can also start adding some of your collected moss. Um, I have. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is super common in forests. Daria probably has some of this in Connecticut. This is a lichen. Yeah, oh, definitely. Not to be mistaken with werewolves, which I also think are called lichen. Exactly. Yeah? Not a, not a yeah, werewolf. Totally. Lichen. Like I don't know if we have those in the woods in Connecticut, but what? your brother's turning into a werewolf right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming back. Um, so this stuff is really cool. I love it because it is has a rad rippliness to it, and it's white. Mm -hmm. When you flip it over, and it tends to be black on the other side. So you can really start to play with texture and color mm -hmm. um, for the top. Wow, that is. A Where'd you go? Wow. Wow. That's crazy. We can, wow, you got different kinds. Now oh, you have another eat. question for you. Yeah. If you like the way it looks on top with all the moss and the cool things, can you make a terrarium in something that's not translucent at all, like a teacup or another kind of vintage receptacle? Yeah. Um, but what you'd probably want to do with a, with a teacup, which I love your style. Whoever said that, I'm a huge tea drinker. So um, just won my just won my counselor heart. Um, so with that, you would probably because it's not going to be getting a lot of light through that teacup unless it's a see-through teacup. Um, bring your plants to the top and you know have them. It's almost more like a planter at that point. It's like spilling out, kind of like how mine is. Um, then you'll have a better opportunity to to nurture it. Um, and and one of the fun things is really seeing the different layers. But if you don't want to, it's cool. You can still have like a, a little you know deer. Uh, drinking out of a lake, which is uh, yeah, awesome. I knew how to do that. But you still put the three different layers of potting materials, yeah. and you don't need anything to drain it at the bottom. Uh, no, I mean right now um, the the charcoal is going to help with the moisture. Um, you're just also because mm -hmm. the teacup's super little, you're not going to water it a lot. I wouldn't even water this one a lot. Um, and we can talk about watering in a second when we're, when we're getting closer to being finished, um, because watering and how you're taking care of it over time is a really important part of it, having a healthy life. Mm -hmm. um, so today, my friend Goli um, inspired me. Uh, hello to Goli, if you're watching. So she inspired me to do something super creative, and I want to try to remake it. Um, let me see if I can give you an example before I put it in my pot. So Goli uh, got some of this moss, uh, the sheet moss, and she got an antelope. <laughs> I'm like trying to get it to stay, but maybe I'll just be able to demonstrate. So one of the things that I have um, that, uh, be careful when you're using it, but I have, oh, that's not a good example. I have glass. I have sea glass. Ooh, nice. So it's super soft. The edges aren't uh, sharp. Um, you can get this in art stores. Um, if you have like a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or a Beverly's, you can go there and you can get a little package of it. So it's already tumbled and the edges aren't sharp. So uh, Goldie did this. So she had uh, the little antelope dude, and then she put this here, and it and it looked like he was drinking from a lake. I was like, Aww. super clever. So cute. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was a little bit of a flatter piece. Let's say a smaller lake. Um, <laughs> here. So and then she was like, well, you know, like we need to create some different edging for it. So then what she did uh, is. I have a little, um, nope, not a good picture. Uh, here we go. Um, some pebbles, some like super baby pebbles. And so what we did is then uh, she rimmed the uh, lake with the pebbles so it looked more like an established waterway. Or speaking water of water, life. Natalie, speaking of water, will you actually tell us how to take care of these plants, especially for other uh, campers like myself who maybe don't have really good luck keeping things alive. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely will teach you how to water your plants. Um, one of the things that um, uh, these plants like is um, they don't want to be over watered. You're probably going to, you want them to dry out. You want to, again, kind of get back to touching the soil. And if you can stick your finger in, maybe to about like your knuckle, and it's dry, 
that means like you're probably in a uh, good shape to water it. Um, but if it's, you're giggling, Jillian, you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm not yelling at you for giggling. <laughs> and I have like a guilty giggle to you. <laughs> so you want it to dry out between waterings, uh, but that's for succulents. Um, and you're only going to want to maybe water it every three weeks. Um, it'll do really well without a lot of water. Um, whereas if you were to, uh, I'll bring out this Medusa fern. If you were to have this in a terrarium, you're going to want to water it. Um, it'll still have, it'll still be really moist in there. I would probably say maybe once a week. But what it likes is a little, just a watering can. You're not going to be like, you know, like tons of water. Maybe that's Jillian's style. Where you're that's like, my style. Yeah. How do you know? I was in my terrarium and hope for the best. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, get a little baby watering can. And um, if not a baby watering can, a, a water bottle, a, a spritzer water bottle works that's really a good well. Idea. Um, and that's super. You can get those for a dollar. You know, uh, if you got it a Safeway or a, a Ralphs or a Tom Thumb, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of my favorite plants. Oh. This is a epiphyte. Ooh, um, it's a it's a Tillandsia um, uh, kind, the species, and it actually has two little baby. Blooms. I don't really think you can see them that well. A little yeah, bit. Sort of. Yeah. It's yeah. really happy. And, um, and this is an air plant. And cool. this air plant, this is, this is the base of it. Um, this actually survives completely off of just no soil, just the air. Wow. So I actually have a lot of these in my shower because it likes to be in uh, humid environments and it likes to just be spritzed. So this is a really cool plant if you're wanting to do an enclosed terrarium that um, is, you know, with ferns and things that like to be more wet. This is a really cool friend to add in there. Um, cool. And it, yeah, like I said, keeping it in a shower because the shower naturally has a soft mist to it. Really fun. You never have to take care of it, and it blooms, and it's really neat. Awesome. Thanks, well, Natalie. Uh, yeah, I mean, thank you, Natalie, for all this, and uh, everybody else. Um, Thanks, Daria. Thanks, uh, Sage. Thanks, uh, Tyler and Jillian. Uh, Natalie, where could we reach you? Oh, there we go. There's yours. Uh, Natalie, where could we uh, reach you if we have more questions about terrariums? Yeah, actually, um, you can uh, follow me on Google Plus. You can add okay. circles. Um, that's one way. Uh, I'm also going to be commenting all day long today, tomorrow, on the on the posts that are made all day today. Um, Great about terrariums. So on the make page, if you have any comments, I will jump in and help you out. Um, also, uh, if you guys have uh, photos of your projects that you're making at home, feel free to post photos of them, maybe of your mess. I, I'm seriously going <laughs> to post a photo of my mess. I need a mess. Uh, yeah. And use the Maker Camp hashtag. It's uh, the pound sign, Maker Camp. Um, you can even toss in uh, Weird Science Wednesday. There we and go. Um, the make team, Nick and uh, Jillian and Tyler and myself will be able to find it. Uh, we might reshare it on the make page or on our own pages, on our own profiles. And um, we look forward to, you know, plus wanting uh, your great stuff. And keep the great projects coming. I'm, I'm really excited. I am going to spend even more time today um, playing with more of these things. Um, let me, in closing, let me show you a couple other uh, photos of finished projects. Um, Here's, a, here's one of the coolest things that I got that I did get around to showing you. But this would be a really cool closed environment. Oh, like, it's cool. like a UFO. Um, it's oh. actually, this is two pieces. Wow. So I got this at a, at a thrift store for $2. And I got this at a thrift store for $15. So by all means, you don't have to you know, go out and spend lots of money. But I thought it was really neat. This is called a cloche. And, um, and so this uh, could go in here easily and cover a fern. And so this would be one of the closed environments we're talking about. Or if you wanted to build a closed environment, you could do the, um, you know, get a, a, a peanut, not a peanut butter, but a jelly jar, like a jelly jam jar, and, yeah. tighten, and tighten the lid like we show you on uh, the Make Projects website. You can check okay. it out on Makezine. Um, and so that would be another great closed environment. So this was exploring open. This is closed, and then let me show you guys a couple cool examples of, so here's, um, oh wow, oh beautiful, it looks really cool, 
and mm -hmm. you know, nice. if, again, if you're not near the forest like like Daria and I am, <laughs> you can have a little. This is one of those ward cases that I was playing about that was mm. from the. Trip. Oh, that's cool. Those yeah. are super beautiful. These are a bit expensive, so if you can make some on your own, please do. Um, and and tell us about it. Yeah, show us your pictures, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Um, oh, one of the things I didn't really talk about too, orchids. Um, this is a slippery. Hmm, I'm trying to remember the name. Maybe it's just called a slipper. It's this beautiful kind of like monkey-looking orchid. Orchids do really well in the wet, closed environments. Um, also, they like to. Um, these like to be not in soil though. They like to be more in wood chips. Things uh, wood, especially that has like a fur to it. Um, Cool. Well, I think, Natalie, we're going to head out. We're going to give people time to uh, leave comments, and we're going to uh, ask if you want to be in the Junior Counselor Hangout yeah. uh, at 3.30 in about half an hour. Uh, leave us a comment. Tell us that you want to be, hey, we want to be in the Hangout with the Junior Counselors. Uh, we'll talk more about terrariums, mm -hmm. other projects. Uh, tomorrow, sneak peek, we'll be doing Polymer Clay with Mark Fraunfelder uh, from Make Magazine and Boing Boing, so uh, be sure to stick around for that. And, uh, you know, thanks, everyone, again for an uh, awesome Hangout, and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Good to meet you guys.